To the supporters and members of the Collingwood Football Club, I wanted to make sure that you were the first to know the outcome of the ASADA investigation into Josh Thomas and Lockie Keefe. Uh, just to let you know that earlier today, the players were in at the club talking to their teammates and then to the board. Um, firstly, they apologised for the disruption and problems that they've created this year, not only for the club, but for themselves and the program that uh, Bucks had set up for the year. Um, and at the same time, they advised their teammates and the board that they will not be contesting the ASADA findings. Um, what that means is there'll be a press conference later on today where the boys will read a statement and then I will advise the media on the position the club's going to take, but I wanted you to be across that statement first. So I'll read parts of the statement uh, just so you're aware on where the club sits on this issue. So as I mentioned, the players will be suspended from all sport in Australia for two years, backdated to March 2015. The Collingwood Football Club has decided in response to the announcement to delist both players. They've also had a portion of their 2015 contracts withheld as required by the AFL and ASADA, sums which amount to a fine of approximately $50,000 each. This figure has been agreed to by the players and their representatives. The Collingwood Football Club has advised both players that if they choose to nominate for the national draft, that we will pick them up as rookies if they're available when it gets to our pick. At this point, I'd like to clarify the view of the board and the club leadership around this incident. We accept that Josh and Lockie did not intentionally take performance enhancing drugs and did not knowingly consume clenbuterol. We accept that this was a case of two young men who made a poor decision to consume illicit drugs, a decision that they will regret for the rest of their lives. Their decision will cost them two years of playing AFL football, a game that they had always wanted to play and had loved ever since they were young boys. It will ultimately cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars and damage their reputations. They've let down their family and their teammates and after a two year break there's certainly no guarantees that they'll ever play football again. We certainly hope they do as they're good young people who have made a bad decision and we believe is not part of a pattern of behaviour for these individuals. Our commitment to redraft them says much about our regard for these players and I'm talking about the board, the leadership and coaches and certainly their teammates. We also believe that the best thing that we can do for them is to provide light at the end of the tunnel, a chance to rekindle their careers and rebuild their brands. To this end, Lockie and Josh will participate in a targeted AFL drug testing program at the discretion of the club as they are determined to rebuild their careers and reputation. As everyone would be aware, this six month investigation is being conducted by ASADA in conjunction with the AFL. The Collingwood Football Club has cooperated fully whenever asked, but has largely been a bystander. During our various discussions with Josh, Lockie, their legal representatives, their managers, ASADA, the AFL, and other relevant internal and external parties, we've had to observe strict confidentialities. It would not have been possible to establish the facts without first agreeing to these confidentialities, which has allowed all parties to speak freely and for us to gather a complete and we believe an accurate picture of this ordeal. The undertaking given to receive this information will continue to be honoured. So what have we learnt out of this as a club? And there's four points. That the review of the AFL's illicit drug policy that's currently underway is not only warranted, but we believe that change is necessary. We want to be preventing problems, not solving them. Point two, there must be a greater level of accountability and consequence for players if they are detected taking illicit drugs. I remind everyone that Lockie and Josh made a decision to take illicit drugs, not performance enhancing drugs. And that was done on the assumption that even if detected, they would only receive a strike without sanction and their identities would remain anonymous. This is clearly not a big enough deterrent. We need to have an industry policy that has a consequence big enough to convince all players to say no. Point three, we've also learned that the club needs to be an inside part of any new IDP. 
regime. No one in the game has a greater investment in or concern for their players than the clubs. In terms of helping players with a problem or any description that the club is in a unique and privileged position to help. The position at present is largely ignored. The fourth and arguably most important thing that we've learned is there is no longer a separation between illicit and performance enhancing drugs. Anyone in our game who chooses to consume illicit drugs must also for now, from now on accept that they may also be consuming performance enhancing drugs. The event that has brought us here today, I believe amounts to a turning point for our code and more broadly for Australian sport. A new reality exists for athletes across Australia following today's outcome. The, the decision to take an illicit drug, which up until now would have held no consequence in some sports and in the AFL scene an anonymous strike recorded, could now result in a major sanction or the end of your career. The game changes for athletes as of today. So there's no doubt that this is a sad day for the club and its supporters and it's also a sad day for the players and their families. We don't like seeing any of our players in a situation like this that has caused so much damage to the club and to them and their careers and reputations. But it's a necessary day as part of us all moving forward and uh, certainly these young men have been held accountable but we'd certainly like to see them back playing for the club one day. But I did want to spend some time to talk to you as a supporter of the club about our position on illicit drug use and it's a position of zero tolerance. We will continue to confront individuals that are thinking of or have used illicit drugs and we will look to hold them accountable um, and also if they require welfare put that in place but we need to get to a situation where when these young athletes are making decisions about using illicit drugs we need to get to a point where they say no. We will also continue to confront the AFL's illicit drug policy if we believe that it's a contributing factor for why these young men are still making poor decisions. It's an agreement between the AFL and the Players Association but it's something that we will continue to be involved in. And while the club does take a zero tolerance approach to illicit drug use, it can't be a life sentence. And to our two young men, to Lockie and Josh, uh, certainly, and hopefully I speak on behalf of all our supporters, that it's going to be a long 12 months um, where they're going to need to go through a lot of challenges psychologically and physically if they want to continue to uh, play AFL football at the highest level. But I think what we've put in place today, and hopefully you support the club's position, there is a chance that we will again one day see both players running around with the famous black and white stripes. Thank you.